and uh, welcome to this uh, installment of Frank and Mary here in Hopkinton. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us. We're, in, we're all over the place. And, and as a result of that, everybody gets to specialize. And I do nothing but elder law. Uh, this show, though, is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to any of my seminars, I know I do some here at the Hopkinton Senior Center. My kind friend Amy Beck has invited me to go. The, um, I often talk about my friends Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you live in Hopkinton, you want to do all of that in Hopkinton. You don't want to move to San Diego or D.C. to be with your kids. They're great out there, but you don't want to move. And so the question is, who are the people you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about um, in order to stay here and be able to live the rest of your life right here? So I live far away in Marlboro, uh, way up the street, so I don't know who those people are here, but Amy Beck does, which is why I asked Amy to be my co-host on the show, uh, because Amy runs the Senior Center and also just seems to know everybody, including, <laughs> so today I had talked to Amy ahead and I had said, so maybe we should you know, ta have a show, because I know that the Senior Center does stuff around tax preparers, and you know, I've got this great person that we can have and then, of course, I met her today, and then Amy said, oh, well, I know her. So, Amy, who, who do we have today as our guest? Well, we have Jean Warden um, with us today, and she is involved. She does a lot of things for us at the Senior Center, but one of the things she does is through the AARP and does the taxes for people, and she can tell us a little bit more about what's involved with that. Oh, so she multitasks? She multitasks. She, this, we are, she just, we, just has her tax hat on today, but she has right. other hats? She does. Uh, we have medical rides, and she's a volunteer driver for that, and she helps out in other ways whenever she's around. Which, which is, you know, when, so when I'm talking about to folks about Frank and Mary, and I mm -hmm. tell people, especially I talk about Frank and Mary when you're early retirement or mid-retirement, you, you kind of owe the, it to the system to do that. You know, you need to be doing that, right? Because later on, and then you hope someone's going to do it for you. Right. Someone's going to help you out. So that's great that you just do a whole bunch of stuff. We're, we're very fortunate to have Jean and a whole slew of other volunteers. And so it's a great, great opportunity for us. And I'm thrilled she's here with us today. So just, just as brief background, you've been in Hopkinton for a long time? Uh, over 40 years I've lived here. Oh, you're new, so you're not a native. No. No, <laughs> no I'm a, a northern, I was born in northern Vermont. In northern Vermont, yeah. But uh, I needed a job, so I just came down. So you came so. here, right. right? Now, did you have kids here? Cause you, I, I I'm did, not married, I have no children. But you told me you were a, you were a teacher. I and, was a high school teacher yeah. in Menden Upton. That's great. For 32 years, taught physical education, and then went to the last 20 years, taught the high school math. And, and she told me in her math class, she'd actually have the kids bring in, in their, 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 the, their 1040s. W-2s. Right? Their w, and their W-2s, yeah, and they'd smart. actually do the tax returns, right? And I loved one of her lines we were talking before, and she did it this, this particular year. And they, and they said, Ms. Warden, we did that last year. And she said, well, welcome to the real world. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, you get to do this every year. This isn't just one test. <laughs> no, and I think that's great because how, I think that's one of the skills that are missing for a lot of kids. They just don't know what's involved in the tax returns. And I, frankly, I let my husband take care of it, I, I admit. But I, I, it is good for everybody to know how to do it. You've passed it on. Well, I've passed Although, on. honestly, I have too. I haven't done one in a long time. So thank Thank you so much for, for coming. So once again, the reason why we're, we're in, we've invited you for today is that tax season's about to start. So can, can you just tell us a little bit about the tax preparation program, how you got involved? You told me that you do, once, besides multitasking here in Hopkinton, mm -hmm. I am told that, that Jean actually multitasks and goes to a bunch of communities she does. doing this. She, this she's is a, great. Spreads herself out. Yeah. So, so just, just kind of tell us, you know, how the how the tax prep program works, and kind of who does it, and and when it starts, and then let's talk a little bit about who sh who should come in to talk to you. And the moral of the story is probably everybody should at least yes. talk to you. But t tell us about the program. This is a program through the AARP, IRS. They provide so, us. So with it's like the, a joint thing, AARP. It, right. But with, yes, yeah. and we it provides us with the the. Uh, program to do the taxes. We're doing Tax Slayer now, and it's for the volunteers. We are volunteers. There's about 100 of us in Central Mass that volunteer anywhere from New Hampshire down to Rhode Island, Connecticut border. 
That's a ton. That's I, I happen to be in, in the group from Hopkinton South to I do Milford Senior Center, Milford Library, Bellingham Senior Center, and Franklin Senior Center along with Hopkinton. And you're hardly paid for this, right? No this pay at all. <laughs> no. no pay. And uh, I tell them the only thing they owe me when they come in is a thank you and a smile. Uh, we don't want, we don't want, it, we can't accept anything because yeah. we don't sign our name to uh, it. And it's their return. It's their return. It's, uh, they, whatever they tell us to do, we just know where to put it. But by the way, it's their return, but, but, but when they come in to see you, right, at the end of that meeting, they're actually, they're actually filing their return. Yes, right? but yes. But it, this we, is a huge thing. Right. right. Well, they come in and we won't ask them, please open your envelopes before you come in. So bring <laughs> and sometimes they come in and I, I tell them, I'm sorry, I'm not, by law, I can't open your mail. So you have to open your own, and right. we would ask them, take it out of the envelopes. You know, right. just bring it right. in. We don't right. need the envelopes. Bring it in, and if you look, bring in last year's return. We're doing 2019 this year. Yeah. Bring in 2018. Whatever you, whether we did it or a paid professional did it, yeah. bring that in. And before you bring it in, look in it and see, what did you do last year? Did you have 1099 interest or dividends or... And it makes sense you have them this year. Because if you're coming in and missing something, and then we do it, and all of a sudden, uh, a month later, you bring in and say, oh, I forgot to do this one. We have to do an amended to form. We can do okay. them. Not that I care to do them, right, but right. I'd rather do them all. So when they come in, they sit down with us. We go through what, what we have, uh, what they have in the envelope. And I've got some people I've been doing them for years. This is my 19th year of doing this. Your 19th year. 19th year. I started when I retired. And, uh, but, but at least, you know, you get retirement, and you're going to get a percentage of this income, you know, as, as, as a special retirement income from I all the income no, that I, you've made. I hear nothing what you said. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but, so, so when they come in, before they come in, is there a list someplace of the, what, you, what they should be kind of thinking about bringing y in? Yes. And if they, we did it last year, they can envelope. If they look on the env outside envelope, it says, yeah what to bring next year. Oh. So when they come in, we go through it, and then when we get, it goes on the computer, and we ask them questions about, do you have anything more? Or we put it on the computer, and then someone else will come and set and check ours, and review it, make sure it's correct. Because it's uh, very easy to change numbers from, uh, you know, two, three to three, two. You know, it's just, especially by the time you've done the fifth one that right, day, right. you might. So then when they get done, uh, we print it out from, give them a copy, mm -hmm. and uh, before we send it off, we ask them, is your name correct? Is your address correct? Is your social security number correct? And uh, chat will tell them whether they're getting a refund. If they're getting a refund, then would you like it direct deposit? You've got to bring a check, not a deposit slip, a check, so that we can get the routing number and your account number. And we, uh, we always ask them, when you, when you put it out, is that correct? You check it with your check to make certain. Just to make sure. Right, because I tell them, if, if I make a mistake on the taxes, I can fix it. If I make a mistake on your bank account, I can't do a thing about that. Mm -hmm. And then when they, everything is done, then we electronically send it in, e-file it. And uh, we only e-file. We don't mm -hmm. do any paper returns. Mm -hmm. um, once in a while, I get somebody who says, no, I want to send it. I said, sorry, we don't do that. We e-file. If it has to be a paper return, we make the decision. Once in a while, you find something, it's got, we know it's going to get rejected. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll make another copy for them. So. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. So and, 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 when do you, and, and when do you folks start, and where, where does this all happen? Does it happen at the Senior Center? It does happen at the Senior Center, and what people will do is they'll call in and uh, reserve a date and time with us. We do start them, I guess, February 4th is yes. our first, when we start um, having dates for people, um, mm -hmm. and we go through the first weekend of April, week of April, correct? Yes. So we do take their information we tell them to remember to have all their documents before they come in and there are um, the, as Jean said there is a list of the documents that they should have mm -hmm. also there are things that you can't do like if someone has a rental property you don't get involved in it, something if like they that. receive money from a rental property right not if they're renting themselves yep. but 
But if they do, we can't because you got depreciation then. Right. And we don't. We aren't. You know, with a few classes we have, we don't haven't learned to do that. So. Right. Right. And that'd be. Are, are there any other folks that are just kind of automatically excluded because of the nature of their income, other if, than the rental? Property? If they're really completely self-employed, we yeah. don't do that. Uh, they could have some self-employment, some something on the side that we can do. Uh, so we can do a Schedule C. I see. But mm -hmm. uh, I see. But if they're really, if they're running a business or something, no, you don't no, want to we don't. don't we don't touch it. There's too much that. involved, and yep. we don't have. We have to take a test, but it's not, it's for the, what we do. It's what we call out of scope. Some things are out of scope. So. Right. So how many people does she, can you see it? Uh, oh, can people I see don't know at one how time? many we. Are. Well, we have two people who come in, um, yep. and so they can see. I guess do you see five people a day? Five, right? I see. And uh, what's the other and part? That's, and that's once a week. Once that's a week. once a week yeah. at the senior center in Hopkinton. There are other places, and when we yeah. fill up, we send them to other places because we have a limited amount of time and, and uh, area for them to work in. Um, I think the important thing to remember is have your documents before you call and make an appointment or make sure that you will have them by the time you yeah. set up an appointment and then bring them all with you. But they only have about an hour per person. So we're, doing an hour, minutes, yeah. we're doing an hour and 15 minutes this year. Right. Uh, just because sometimes we get backed up and some people, you know, are missing some things. And stuff. Right. right. Just, so, so now can we just talk about, so who should file? Who, who should file? And, and one of the reasons why I, I mention that is, is because of this whole the circuit breaker question. You know, you get people who maybe they don't need to file, but maybe they really should file, right? And then can you just talk about, you know, ch you know changes this year, changes that, you know, that people, so people might, you know, think they, they've got this figured out in their head, right? But maybe not because the, the, the government keeps changing the rules on you. <laughs> and then the famous circuit breaker program, which I, to be quite honest now, I, you know, I would always associate with electricity. It's like, so what is that, like a utility? So you just talk, I mean, to talk about, well, I'm a little slow, you know, so I, I can't oh, yeah, figure yeah. this stuff out. <laughs> so if you could you talk about the, talk about the circuit breaker too. So, so the, the, all, all, of, all of the above, right? All so right. who should, who, sh who should file, what's new, and talk about the circuit. Breaker. Right. Number I'll one. Keep a, I'm going to keep a checklist. Okay, keep right. a checklist. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things is that we do what we call low income. Now, sometimes low income for some people is not, you know, we get like people that have $30,000, that's all they have, for, and, they, and they're trying to run a home. So uh, that is the thing. We don't, once in a while you get somebody that comes in and then where you go, you know, please don't come back next year. You make $100,000, and we've got people that need this program, and if you take a space, right. then please, uh, they can't, they have to pay something. They can't afford it. Right, because if you make $100,000, you can afford yes, to Yes, you can else afford to paid professional. Right. Right. So once in a while, you get somebody that, for, uh, that took out a lot of extra money for some reason, and it's over 100000 and that's just one year. So, yeah. But otherwise, you know, please... Uh, Please go find some other place. So, yeah. But, you know, usually if they come in and we don't realize it, because the senior center doesn't ask, and they mm -hmm. can't ask them anyway. Right. But, so I'll say, well, I've got the time. I'll do it, but please don't come back next year. Okay. So. And, and, and for, so for people who are thinking about this, is there kind of an informal number that you think of that if you make more than well, X? They, they told us for, for a couple, uh, for joint, 80000 But, yeah. you know, I don't worry. When I see a six figure, yeah. then I go, right. you know, that's it. So. And even at that, for eighty, I mean, I got a lot of a lot of clients. I don't see a lot of people with income over eighty thousand no. dollars senior. Get a lot no. of assets, maybe, you right. know, or right, right? in the yeah, IRA or whatever. But it's the income it's that the income. they're looking right. for. And then the, the circuit breaker. Circuit breaker is for it has to be somebody sixty five. Mm -hmm. over. It could be a joint one, but at least one is 65. And the other one can be younger than that? Yes, they can be younger than that. Yeah. And it, the income for a single, 60000 if you're under 60000 you may qualify depending on. And it's 80000 I believe, for a joint. If, you're, if it's a couple. For a joint, mm -hmm. right. So, now, it, so it's a single, and it's whether you live in a house or whether you own a house or whether you rent a house. Yes, we could do rentals. Yeah. You don't see too many rentals. Yeah. But the ones who, who but, but own the yeah, house. Talk about people who own the house. Right. Pay, they pay real estate tax. Yeah. And just remember, when you bring it in, we don't want fiscal year. We want calendar year. And that's the other problem we have. And there should be four uh, payments that you make. Bring mm -hmm. in those 
those receipts that you have or whatever your, your tax bills for the for the calendar for the, year. So it's all the payments that you made in, in 2019, 2019. Even though a piece of those were made for, for fiscal right. 2019 right. Yeah. and a piece for fiscal 2020. Okay. Yeah, because remember the taxes are for a calendar year. Right. So there's, and so, so there's also taxes? water and sewer. And water and sewer. There should be in Hopkinton two water and sewer and four real estate taxes. I get it. Bring those all four in. Don't yeah. just bring me one and say, well, they're all the same. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but my taxes in July go up. <laughs> go up. So, so August is in November are higher than the yeah. February and May. So yeah. they look and say, well, what is your total income? Social Security, pensions, uh, interest, dividends, and even what is maybe not taxed, because some people don't get taxed on everything. Everything that you got for income goes on and we take a look at 10%. Right, so even though so even though your social security, depending on how much your total income was, you might not have paid tax on it, for purposes of figuring out the, ta the circuit breaker, that gets included. Yes, you it does. A, if you got a veteran's pension that wouldn't have been taxable, yep. for these purposes, that gets included. So yep. now I got all this income. Right. And then I take 10% of that income. Right. Right, and then on the and then on the real estate tax side, what do I do on, in, ter we, in terms of figuring out we what? We total up all four real estate taxes paid. All, all the bills paid. Paid, yeah. And also, uh, yeah, you can't still owe the money. No, right? you can't and, get, and right. also, and if abatements, you didn't pay that, so right. we don't include that. Only. Right. And half of your water and sewer bills that you pay. And half of your water and sewer. So, right. So you say, add those together. So I'm a Hopkinton person, and say yeah. I got a house. Say I got a, like a five, you know, every house is like three hundred thousand for it's a lot of money, right? So say I got a house, and say, so say my total tax bill was four thousand dollars. Five, we'll say five, four, let's say four thousand dollars. That's a pretty conservative number, right? Right. And now I take all my water and sewer, yeah, and I divide and, and take and, half of that. And I take half, and I divide that by two. So say all of those bills put together were another thousand dollars, right? So the total number I got now is five thousand dollars. Right. Right. Now say my income, and you told me my income is Social Security and it's everything. Everything. Say my income was forty thousand dollars. Right. Right. Counting everything, ten percent of that is four thousand dollars. So now what happens? And so we subtract the five thousand, the four thousand, you get a thousand dollars. The state will give you a thousand dollars to. Basically, to help you pay your real estate taxes and stuff. So the state's going to send you a thousand dollar check. This is not. Yes. You, it's a deduction, and you're getting, or it's you know, you paid money in, and you're getting it back. Mm -hmm. You're going right. to pay zero in tax for the year, True. or in withholdings or anything, yep. else, or owe zero in tax. You still get a thousand dollars. Right. Dollar yeah. for dollar, right? For, right. That you do the, the subtraction. The, the difference between. But the, and there's a, is there, there is there a maximum though the yes. amount that you get, and how much is that? This year it will be one thousand one hundred and thirty dollars, the most you can get. Is one thousand one hundred and thirty dollars the most you can get? That's a big. That's a big number. It is a big number, and it helps a lot of you know helps them pay those taxes. Too. And, you, and you told me something else when we were talking kind of beforehand. You said that you get every once in a while you'll get somebody who didn't wasn't aware of this before, True. and you'll say, guess what? We can amend your prior returns. Yes. Three years back. So in addition to looking doing the 2019 numbers, we can do 2018, 2017, 2016. Right. As right? long as it's 16 is sent in by April 15th. Is, is by April fifteenth. Yeah, of this the year. others could be later, but that one has to be sent in. But. Right. So, so, in, so, in potentially, you can get four years worth of these right checks. This is I, a lot of money. Yeah, I think most of the people now we have most of them figured out. And sometimes, if they come in, they're not sixty-five. We'll say, okay, in their low, we'll say, all right, next year when you come in, you're going to be sixty-five. Please bring those in. This, so. Because that's important. That's great information. Hmm. That's just right. great information. And the other thing we could do, people that have a high rent. Also, talk about that. They yeah. take about tw they take twenty five percent of your rent. If that's over that uh, ten percent of your income, then you can get some money back for your for to help you pay your rent. So let's do this. We'll do the same thing. So say I'm paying fifteen hundred dollars a month in rent. Yep. That's not a lot of rent anymore. You know, remember no, no. fifteen hundred dollars? Right. Jesus. When I think about when I was in college and we were there were four of us. There were four sharing the rent, which was four hundred dollars, <laughs> and we're trying to scrape it together. Mm -hmm. You know. So fifteen hundred dollars times twelve, eighteen thousand dollars. Okay. And so you take a percentage of that. What's your percentage? Twenty-five percent, one fourth of it. It's four thousand five hundred dollars. All right. Right. Yep. And so, so one, once again, going going back to your numbers, if I had income of, or if I had income of, fifty thousand dollars, 
if, you know, in 10% of that, it would be $5,000. Right. If but it, so in that you, case, I wouldn't get a benefit. No, you wouldn't get it back. But, but if it was less than but that. But if I was just living on Social Security, so I had income of $30,000, yep. 10% of that is 3000 now I'm getting that benefit. You're right. I could get all that money yeah. back. We don't see too many for rent, but we do. We Once in a while, you Of course, you don't you have many renters. I mean, in Hopkins, you don't no, have as many renters. No, no, any place. But if, mostly it's the, it's the one the real estate yeah. Oh, and I just want to mention, and, and this doesn't apply for senior housing, right? Right, because they're just, subsidized just already. Yeah. They are subsidized, and so this is a, like a subsidized fund. So right. senior housing, so like I know in Hopkins and where it is, and, yeah. and so. So I've checked that off my list. Now, now we all get the circuit breaker, including me, right? So now what's new? What's, what is new this year? That people would say, oh, you know, that, that, I didn't know about that. One other thing I'll, before that, I'll yeah, just say, yeah. and I don't think it pertains to too many people, because your house can't be worth more than like $800,000. Mm -hmm. But for the most of the people we see, I look at it and I say, under eight hundred. dollars oh, yes. Oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So. All right, what's new this year? Oh, excuse me. You, you mentioned beforehand, you also wanted to mention trust, though. There yes. There is an issue with trust. Trust, yes. If people have a trust, can they get that circuit breaker? And it depends on whether, and you're going to help me out on this, revocable or irrevocable. Well, and it, well, it really depends on who's the trustee. And, and, yes. And so the reason why you, this, this comes up, so we, I talk to a lot of people, especially if this is their only asset and mm -hmm. they're single, that, that and, they, and they want to protect it for mass health purposes, I'll say, well, you know, what you want to do is you want to transfer an interest of this, in this house out into this trust, mm -hmm. right? And, you're, and you can't be the trustee of that trust. It's got to be somebody okay. else, right? One of your kids has to be the trustee. And, this is, and, and, and so that could be an issue if the house is in the name of right. the trust and you're not the trustee of the trust. If that's a revocable. That is an irre uh, and that's, irrevocable. That's an irrevocable trust. All right. Yes. Uh, if the name is on the trust, Yet they can do the circuit break. If they're the trustee, yes. Right, but if yes. it is not, they cannot. And what about irrevocable trust? And the, so that's the issue. If it's irre, it, 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 the, the issue would be, you can in theory have an irrevocable trust where you're the trustee, but there's no special, there'd be no special reason to do that. No, and you can't, you, you cannot you, do that, and you, uh, you, you can't do the the real estate taxes for that. For the circuit breaker. If, you, if it was irrevocable. Irrevocable. Right. But the, it mentioned when I was looking it up, it's something about you can do it as rent. Are you paying that real estate tax as your rent? Uh, That's except, a question. Except, except that typically in that kind of structure, you're not paying any rent to, that, to the trustee of the trust. Right? That in, the stand, if, if, in the most common case when the kind of, this kind of thing is right. happening, you're not paying any rent to right. that trust. That so that be may the, be one of the... That, but then you'd be doing the rent instead and, of the, and, the real estate taxes. So. Right. right. And I have to say, this is why I let someone else do the do taxes, yeah. because I get totally... I'm, right. I'm, I'm following the numbers, but as far as the rules, this is where someone else can help right. me out, which and, is and, nice to have you. And you know, this was educational for me in terms of going through this, because this is... this When I'm advising people, especially singles, right? I've never brought this up before. I've never brought up the negative effect of the circuit breaker. The positive is you're trying to protect this property, but then the question, the negative is, you should be aware of the fact you're no longer going to get your circuit breaker. Yeah. Fortunately, I still haven't gotten anybody call me really angry the year after we did it. Said, <laughs> "Wow, why, did, why didn't you tell me about this?" Right. All right so that's important. Oh, now you were going to mention there was something about the medical deductions. The too. medical, and these are this two change. changes that got changes. changed yeah. in December of 2019 by the government. So this is hot off the press. Yeah, hot off the press. And I didn't realize that somebody mentioned the medical, if you itemize, the medical used to be 10% of your adjusted gross income. It's moved down to 7.5%. So now. if your total medical expenses were more than yeah, a particular right. amount, you could deduct it. Yeah. And now it's more than... Seven and a half percent. Seven and a half percent. But it's when you itemize. And most of my seniors don't itemize. Yeah. And the other thing, there's two other things that mentioned that were new. It, uh, for people used to have to take out some from IRAs or mm -hmm. annuities at 70 and a half years. Now it's moved up to 72. So you don't have to start taking until so the year in which you turn so Right. Big deal for me, by the way, as it happens, because this is my year, right? Okay. I'm going to be yeah. 70 like in two weeks. Yeah. Right? And I right. thought I was going to have to start pulling money. Right. right. And the other one is uh, they didn't have the, en the residential energy credit last year. They put it back in. But that's a maximum. So if you've used it before, you can only take out uh, $500. So that's back in for like uh, storm doors, insulated, yeah. ins windows. And insulation, but not for how 
putting it in only for the product itself. For materials. So, there's material. a, so, so that's a deduction that you can take. That's a, a federal. A percentage. It's a federal. percentage of that, up, yeah. you know, in, yeah. and that's, a, that's right. part of the yeah. federal. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is, the bottom, as, as you were just kind of alluding right. to, you don't want to ask somebody about this. It's like you don't want to be your own lawyer. You mm -hmm. definitely don't want to be your own tax preparer, right? So it may be worth the trouble to stop in, you know, mm -hmm. and ask and find out if this is. And also, I was just going to mention ask early, right? Cause you, definitely ask early because spots fill up quickly and we end up very quickly having to refer people to other centers or libraries in, in surrounding communities. And I think, you know, we are fortunate to have you and, and to have you at the senior center because it is such a service that we can give to people and or we're not really giving but we're providing the location for people providing to have this the location done. and and also so this is also a pitch to anybody out there all those retired CPAs or people that are math junkies like her right <laughs> for next year you ought to do this this is a tremendous contribution that you're making right and there aren't enough of her and that's why they right. fill up right so that's really important now before we go Tell any any quick things on what's going on in the Hopkinton Senior, at Center the Senior Center this month. I this have month. to say, coming into February, we have a great um, Valentine's Day program. If you go on our website, you can certainly, if you don't get our newsletter, please go check it out because we have um, uh, Jer Shea coming on Valentine's Day. We have our a AARP tax prep. We also have French class now, and um, we have someone who will teach you French. You see, on parle français. Uh, yeah. This well, not good. me, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we have a beginning and a refresher class, so we actually have two classes in French, and we have two pottery classes. So, our we've expanded our programs. You've got to check out our newsletter. Either if you don't get it in the mail, go online or stop by, and we can give you a copy and. The rest is all in there, but take a look at what's going on because it's changing every month. And it's growing every month, and part of that is Amy Beck. Right? <laughs> this is really, so thank you very much, Amy. Thank you, thank you very much, Jean. Thanks, Jean. Thank you for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hopkinton. Thank you. <laughs>